I will just let you know because of the scene. I do. I did go get a gun and bring okay. it down here. It's in your vehicle. It, I just do you have any guns on you at all? Lean, no, sir. It's leaning okay. up against the side of my car. Okay. This is your wife and son. <laughs> and son. Okay. It's bad. It's bad. I take the pulses. Yes, sir. <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. I went and get. This is a long story. I'm innocent. I would never hurt my wife Maggie, and I would never hurt my son Papa. I sentence you for the term of the rest of your natural life. Again, I respect this court, but I'm innocent. It might not have been you. It might have been uh, the monster you become when you uh, take 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 opioid pills. What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? Here I am in the tiny town of Hampton, South Carolina, not too far from the border of um, Georgia, not too far from Savannah, Augusta, kind of tucked away. It's a small little town, like I said, but this town has made huge, huge headlines in the past few weeks and well, pretty much since 2021, really. This, look, this cars, I think they're all coming in here. People are coming out to this cemetery a lot. Uh, people are just over at the graves that I'm going to, and it's become kind of a morbid tourist attraction. Now, there's a Netflix series about the Murdaugh murders, and it is extensive, and this case, doing the research for this, it is so uh, twisty, there's so much it's there, there's just when you think you've read something else about the case something else pops up I'm gonna cover pretty much in detail what I can Paul and Maggie Murdoch murdered at the, I'm pointing towards their graves but murdered not too far from here about 20 minutes from here at their home and found guilty of the murder was the husband and father, Alec, some say Alex, I've heard Alec, even though it's spelled Alex, Murdoch, just found guilty not too long ago, two counts of murder. Oh, where do I begin? This case, international headlines, by international I'm, I'm speaking USA and Canada for sure. I'm not sure about the rest of the world and in South Carolina leading up to the, these murders, all the other things that were going on with this family was big news in South Carolina, and now it's become this huge uh, phenomenon almost. One of those things that everybody's talking about, and it's on TV, it's in the tabloids, magazines, you name it, it's, it's, there's gonna be books coming, there's gonna be a movie, everything. I mean, it's a huge case. I'm gonna walk around the cemetery, I'm gonna get my notes out about it, because 
I'm just gonna take you through the timeline and we're gonna go to the graves, the final rest place of Paul and Maggie. Then I'm gonna take you to a few other places around here connected to the case. Finally ending up at the scene of the crime and we'll see what we can see there. Let's go, let's dive into this. Okay, a longtime personal injury attorney, Alec Murdoch, 54, he was heir to a legal dynasty that has held sway over South Carolina's low country region for more than a century. On the 7th of June, 2021, he reported finding his wife Maggie and son Paul dead near the dog kennels on the family's sprawling estate. No arrests were made for more than a year, but Murdoch was indicted last July on two counts of murder and two counts of possession of a weapon while committing a violent crime. He insisted he was not involved in the deaths, but state prosecutors argued he shot the pair at close range with a rifle and shotgun. After less than three hours, a jury found him guilty on all charges. He now faces 30 years to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Prosecutors chose not to seek the death penalty. The convicted murderer is separately facing a wave of financial charges, including allegations he embezzled millions from the family-founded law firm at which he was a partner. Prosecutors said in court that he murdered his wife and son to distract from his misdeeds and gain sympathy. They called more than 60 witnesses over four weeks in an effort to poke holes in Murdoch's alibi and expose numerous inconsistencies in his version of events. Investigators never found a murder weapon, but the prosecution built its case using circumstantial evidence including mobile phone data and gunshot residue. The most significant piece of evidence was a video taken by Paul at the dog kennels minutes before he died, in which Murdoch can be heard in the background. He's got a bird in his mouth! Bubba! Damn, Bubba! Damn, Bubba! It's a guinea! This is a chicken. Come here, Bubba! Come here, Cash! Come here, Bubba! Cash! Quick! For 20 months after the murders, Murdoch insisted he had not been at the kennels that night before admitting at trial that he lied. One of the prosecutors said, Murdoch lies convincingly and easily, and he can do it at the drop of a hat. Attorneys for Murdoch maintained that their client was a loving husband and father who fell victim to sloppy law enforcement work. Buster, Murdoch's surviving son and the defense's first witness, testified that his father was destroyed and heartbroken after the killings. The defense also argued that it was not believable that he had, not, he had had enough time to commit murder, dispose of evidence, and drive to where his alibi placed him. They argued that with no eyewitnesses, no hard proof, and no blood found on his clothing, the state's case was nothing more than, quote-unquote, a theory. Over two days on the witness stand, Murdoch testified in his own defense, which is a high-risk uh, move for any defendant. We all know that. He acknowledged for the first time he was at the dog kennels that night shortly before his wife and son were killed. He conceded he had lied several times to investigators, citing a long-standing addiction to prescription painkillers that made him paranoid. And he admitted to years of theft from clients and people he loved and cared about so that he could fund his abuse of opiates. But he said none of it meant he was guilty. He referred to the victims as Mags and Paw Paw and said, I would never intentionally do anything to hurt either one of them. The testimony was Murdaugh's Hail Mary. The prosecutor said he knew juries like to hear from a defendant and knew he had to explain why he said he lied. The fascination with the Murdaugh murders is due in part to a series of related incidents that have come to light since the double homicide. On June 22nd, police announced that they were reopening an investigation into a 2015 death of a local teen, citing new information gathered while investigating the deaths of the slain Murdaughs. On July 8th, 2015, the body of 19-year-old Stephen Smith was found dead in the middle of Sandy Run Road in Hampton County. Investigators ruled the death of the openly gay teen as a hit and run, but his family doubted the ruling from the beginning. Authorities had received several tips that Smith and Buster Murdaugh, Alex's eldest son, may have been involved in a secret romantic relationship. There have been no recent updates from police regarding this, and it's all just allegations and speculation. Mainly, many people in the area believe that the Murdaugh family may have had something to do with Smith's death and believe the Murdaughs wanted to cover up a homosexual relationship tied to the family. And like I said, that's all purely allegations. In 2018, the family's longtime housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield, died after an apparent accident at their home. Murdaugh encouraged her adult children to file a wrongful death suit. Murdaugh's insurance company paid out to the tune of $4.3 million, but the Satterfields did not receive a dime. 
Murdaugh later admitted he had kept it all. Police are now re-examining how Mrs. Satterfield died. The Murdaugh family claims she tripped over their dogs and fell down the stairs. Now, the boat accident. The year after, Paul drunkenly crashed a boat in an accident that killed one of his passengers, Mallory Beach. He had been charged and was out on bail at the time of his death. Murdaugh implied on the stand that he had faced death threats since the incident. Three months after his wife and son died in September 2021, Murdaugh was injured in a roadside shooting. Authorities later revealed he had staged a botched hit job on himself with the aid of a distant cousin so that Buster could collect a life insurance policy. Wow. That is a lot. Here we are, the gravesite of Maggie and her son Paul. And you see in the background people walking away. Um, like I said, people are coming out here all the time. Oh. So these would be um, the grandparents on the paternal side, Randolph III, Elizabeth Alexander, the mom still alive now here is Margaret Murdaugh 1968 to 2021 and Paul Paul Terry Murdaugh 1999 to 2021 camera I just spoke to some people well one lady uh, lives right around the corner from here they walk through here with their dog and their children and she came and stood beside me while I was looking at the grave and I said um, I said it must be because I could tell she lives right here just walking the dog I said it must get a lot of people out here a lot now which I already knew the answer to but you know it's conversation and she said yes it's very aggravating so there's an awkward pause, of course. I said, yeah. I said, well, I was driving from Charleston to Augusta and thought I would stop by, which is the actual, that's true, because I just was, I wasn't thinking about doing the story until Randy Big Bake on the Move suggested I should do it since he knew my route. He's got a great channel. And then she kind of opened up, you know, she, we we're talking about um, the Netflix show. She said, told me about the HBO one I didn't know about. And then, uh, she said they were her, they were very good family friends. I think they knew them very well. And I said, wow. I didn't want to cry or go into start asking her lots of questions about them. But she actually offered up a bit. She said that they were both lovely people. And Maggie especially. And she asked me where I was from. And I said Canada and that sort of thing. But she wasn't, um, she didn't seem annoyed by me. Because there's nobody here right now. But I guess when you're living close by and there's more cars than ever going through a small town it can get aggravating but fortunately when some of this happens it's, that's what happens it's like a famous movie house crime scene and famous graves people come out here and this is a famous grave now due to I, wanna, I don't want to say infamous due to the infamous case this is a famous grave because there's nothing infamous about this grave site for the two and the elder Murdoch's here as well so there we go, there it is, the final resting place. And they will have a headstone at some point, I'm sure. It's just uh, not here yet. Uh, is it possible, you see the square outline here, 
for the two. Now, is it possible? Because, it, well, I mean, it's 2021, so it's not too long ago. Uh, no, I don't think they're going to do it on the back here. So there'll probably be a separate one behind their graves right here. Now I'm just going to go into town and outside of town and show you a couple of other places having to do with the case that I, uh, I discussed. And we'll just take a look at them. And Oh. Now we're going to go, like I said, a couple of other places. Okay, let's go. And here we are now at Parker Law Group. That's the building right there. This is where uh, Alec Murdoch used to be. Hey, okay, trying a different angle now. Over here, this building right here. That is formerly PMPED, M standing for Murdoch. This was his law offices, and now it's called Parker Law Group. Um, quite an impressive building here in the town of Hampton. But that's it right there. People around here seem to know. Um, I've done two crime locations many times on my channel. Seems around here they may not want too, too many people coming. I was just stopped by a man over there, I was parked, and he said, excuse me, sir, and I said, what? Because I'm not used to somebody calling me sir. I said, and I said, yes, I'm joking. And he said, sir, you're on private property, and um, could you move? And I said, certainly. And he goes, yes, not everything that's not marked isn't, doesn't mean it's not private. And see the woman going in there, in and out of the uh, law group. She's been watching me, which is fine, I get it. You know, maybe the town doesn't want the notoriety, but it, it, perhaps it'll die down. But, but the gentleman who asked me to move was very nice. I said, okay, I'm just going to move over my car or onto another street. And I said, and not be on your property. And he said, that's fine. Like I said, very nice. But I think they're probably, uh, it's a law building in downtown Hampton. It's not a big deal, I don't think. But that's uh, where he practiced law. What I have noticed is there's a lot of cars out of state that have been driving by and slow down. So it is kind of like a tourist attraction. I guess they're getting used to it or getting sick of it. I'm not sure. But like I said, it's somebody's, it's, a, it's an office building and very public streets all around. So it's okay if you were to come out here, you know, we'll just watch my video. But that's the impressive building there. As I've stated, many people come out here, and to my right, there's three cars with people that are taking photographs of the building.
Moselle Road. Now, I believe, as you can see, it's roped off. And I just met some people down the road who were at the cemetery the same time as I was. They recognized me and I recognized them. And we were talking. They said they were just here. I said, were the police outside? They said, yes, but I don't see the police here. You see some flowers at the gate. Okay, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go past this. But the house is so far back, and there's another driveway down the road. I'm gonna take a look at that, leading into the uh, the estate. There's another gate there, but there's this here. Oh, I want that was them. I just I want to ask them a question, but I believe those are the kennels. And that's where the bodies were found. So I just double checked online. It's a Reaper's air, air, airplane hangar. See another little shelter there. That's the kennels. Kennel, there's two buildings right here. Like I said, the house is very, very, very far back. I'm going to show you the other entranceway that it has seen better days. So there is a gate there. It's hard for you to see it. I can see it. It's right there. So I guess that, that was their gate. And then this was put up by police during the investigation and has pro and and has probably remained since I would imagine you can see some flowers there wow this is wild to see and if you come in the summer or spring these trees are gonna well because it no they're coniferous so that's Still, very tree-lined property. It's very difficult to see anything. I'm going to put in aerial views, of course. But where the bodies were discovered is right there. I will say the lady driving away in that car right there, just past that house, that's right where I just was. So sweet. Stop saying hello. <laughs> I mean, so there's a bit of a difference in how some of the locals are reacting around here. But here is the main gate leading up to the house right here and I believe more people are here yep they're taking photographs as well um, I don't want to get in the way of their photo but can you see the house no it's so far back it's so far back wow so that's the uh, I would guess the main driveway they turn in, they're, they're really just dirt roads. And there's no, neither one is a driveway. I mean, they're driveways, but they're not paid or anything, which is odd. And there's, I believe, two houses on the property. And it's, it stretches over two counties, the amount of the, the size of the property. And it's 900 acres in one county, I think like 800 acres in another. It's a lot, it's huge. People are coming and asking me questions about what's going on here. There's car after car stopping. I'm not kidding. And I, I'm, I've been to hundreds of crime scenes. Well, not hundreds. I've been to lots of crime scenes. But nothing like this where people are coming out of their way just to see another one right behind me. Just waved to me. And they were, all, they were out here a second ago taking photographs. And I'm used to people staring at me because of my hair, of course. I mean, it's ridiculous the way it looks. So I get that. But... People are stopping me and asking me questions out here. What's going on? What's the property? And how far back is the house? And where's this? And yeah. So I got to say, for all the crime scenes I've been to, which is quite a lot, this is definitely because it's so f such a fresh case, I guess. Uh, this is so remote, this location. And there are the people that drive by that live around here. They're okay. First of all, there are only 70 people in this general area. 70. There's like 30,000 in like Hampton and the in the county, I believe. I might be getting that wrong, but there's you know a fair amount of people down there in the surrounding counties, I believe. But in this area, we are so remote, there's only 70 people, not 70 residences, 70 people. So if you're here, they know why you're here. Still, well, yeah, standing beside the road, videoing a driveway.
And I know what some people are going to say, Scott, why don't you fly your drone over the property? First of all, look at those trees. My drone won't make it more than 50 feet without me crashing it because I'm not a great drone flyer. I have it in my car with me. But um, second of all, eh, you know, nobody lives there. There's nobody there, so I don't feel like I'm being intrusive if I flew my drone. But there's police that come by, and I know that. I've, you know, researched coming out here and stuff. And I don't know who's on the property right now. There could be police on the property right now guarding it. Somebody guard, And I don't want to get that smoke, you know, flying a drone over and then standing here. Because a million cars are coming by, too. And then I can show you aerial views and show you what it looks like. And really, my drone goes really high and really far. Not a good drone flyer. I don't even enjoy it, really. I don't really enjoy flying my drone, to be honest. I've got some friends that I film with, and they love flying their drone. They're great at it. And if they were here with me, I'd have them get their drone out. <laughs> They're better at it. It's more of a hassle carrying it around everywhere. But if I did fly my drone, I'd probably see the house. But the house is right back there, straight ahead. There's those gates. And you come out here, you're going to see that house there on the side of the road. You're going to see that house there on the side of the road. That just is right at the other driveway entrance toward where the kennels are. So from the Murdaugh family estate out here, just outside of Hampton, thanks for watching. Rest in peace to everyone that I met. Now another truck is stopping by, but I'm on my way out. They're just taking a look at, yep, they're taking photographs too. Rest in peace to everyone I mentioned in this story. Gloria, especially. Mallory, especially. Maggie, especially. Paul, rest in peace. This is a crazy story. Thanks for watching. Peace. Look, it's crazy. So many people keep coming out here, and I'm one of them. But it's these things become morbid tourist attractions, and that's what I do. Thanks for watching. Love you all. Peace.